are the only citizens that actually have a national dream. Seriously. There's no Canadian dream. No such thing as a Spain dream. <laughs> Just an American dream. A dream that we embody in our charter and is articulated in our Declaration of Independence. And while we all recognize the term American dream, many of us, and I would include myself, never really understood the origin of that dream. The term American dream, as I have learned, actually came from the popularized book of 1931, The Epic of America. It was written by James Troslow Adams. The book was considered sort of a, in its time, an offbeat piece of work. It kind of just surveyed what's happened in America since Columbus landfall and onward. What was interesting is that Adams undertook this endeavor during the Depression. And what it did is it reinforced how strong America's faith was in their own country. Adams constructed at that time what became known as the American dream, a dream of a better, richer, and happier life for all citizens of every rank. And this invigorating sense of possibility has often been taken for granted, yet is considered throughout the world American's greatest gift. And as the phrase American dream has insuated itself into each generation's lexicon, what we also know about the American dream is that it has continuously morphed. And it reflects the hopes and the wants of the people of the day. So you may have noticed, like myself, in the past few years, there's a lot of national headlines questioning the status of the American dream. Headlines such as, American dream is lost. The American dream is dying. <clears throat> kind of scary. I grew up American dream kind of gal. See those headlines now as an adult. You think, how can that be? Here's what the experts say. Absolutely not. The American dream is not dying, nor is it lost. But what's behind their answer? These experts understand that the reasons Americans are questioning the status of the American dream is due to the outcomes that Americans today are experiencing as a result of the American dream morphing from 1931. Prevalent in the 30s, 40s, and 50s was an American dream that was duty-bound, loyalty of working together to ensure that all citizens had the opportunity to achieve a better, richer, and fuller life. Today's modern-day meaning of the American dream began taking shape in the 60s and the 70s. And during this period, Americans shifted the American dream to a pleasure-seeking, consumption-spending, self-fulfillment, where social inclusion was granted through purchasing power. This shift in the meaning of the dream took a profound impact on Americans in the 80s and the 90s, so much so that the economists warned Americans and their policymakers that this continued consumption spending was not sustainable by the average American family. Economists and public policy experts also affirmed that this modern day dream of consumerism had taken an extraordinary cost of public sector needs, those of education, transportation, housing, and most importantly, investments in our children. Simply said, experts agreed that the modern day recalibration of the American dream decoupled the founding principle of common good. So that, with the context now of the origin of the modern day definition of the American dream, let's fast forward, as Roy has, to 2016. And let's take a closer look how the modern day American dream, beginning in the 60s, actually has impacted our children today. 65% of our youth that need help within our juvenile justice system are experiencing either a mental health 
or a substance abuse problem. 65%, that's six out of 10. Six out of 10, just glance around the room, six out of 10. Children, 199 children that within the last five years looked to the child welfare system, and I say looked, dependent on the child welfare system to assist them, actually lost their lives in 2015. And since 2009, over 12,000 children in Florida have been tried as adults, and 98% of them have been direct filed. Florida ranks 33 nationally in the number of homeless. We're 47th in children's health. And as Roy mentioned, we recently dropped to 40th in just the overall should you be born in Florida kind of thing. Now, while these lagging indicators, and I really want to be mindful, these are lagging indicators where we are today. They're sobering. I want to give you a glimpse of what's beginning to happen and the morphing of the American dream. And what we're finding is we have very important new public policies taking shape that are being informed for the first time by brain science. Two examples are the brain science that's behind new early learning policy that looks to the brain and looks to the fact that all of what a child needs to develop is happening within the first 36 to 60 months. We also saw an extraordinary ruling from the Supreme Court regarding life sentences of juveniles based on the development of our frontal lobe and our ability to make judgment by the time we're 26. This is incredible policy making. This science, and more importantly, other extraordinary new policies are shaping, reshaping, in 2016, the American dream. And so I'll leave you with this. Throughout our 240 years, Americans have drawn from lessons learned. And when necessary, they call on their policymakers to provide leadership that require an adjustment to the dream. That adjustment helps to protect generations from not having to lower their sights or deny the children an opportunity to create a sustainable way of life. And to those candidates who are with us today, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your commitment to the American dream, the American dream that its founder, James Adams, had, a better, richer, happier life for all citizens of every rank. I think today, as you hear the other uh, speakers, I think, I hope, candidates, that you'll begin to understand some of the innovative information that you can grab hold of, join with our sponsors, the Children's Campaign, and let's redesign the American dream. And thank you for coming today.